You've heard of miter joints, you've heard of butt joints, you've heard of pocket hole screws, but today I'm gonna to show you three joints that will completely up your woodworking game, and they're done right here at the table saw. The first joint that I'm gonna show you today is the locked rabbit miter joint. I know that's a mouthful, but basically it looks like this. It's a miter on the outside, and then on the inside, the pieces kind of fit together like a puzzle. And I like it because it has a lot of glue surface. So whenever you clamp this thing together, it's gonna be rock solid. So to start, I've got my materials. These are my pieces that are already milled and cut to length. And my next step is to mark the pieces accordingly. So I'm gonna start by marking the pieces one, one, two, and two. All of our cuts today are gonna be using the rip blade. And that's because it has a flat tooth on it, and that's gonna help us to get really clean cuts. So the first step is that we're gonna set the height of our blade to the thickness of our workpiece. So we want the top of the blade to just kiss the top of the piece. And then all the pieces that are labeled one, we're gonna carve a groove right down the center of it. Now to do that, you're gonna to have to ride the piece up high like this across the blade. But you can't do that using a regular fence like this because you're gonna risk kickback. So what you have to do is take a piece of plywood or something tall and clamp it to your fence. So you have a lot of work surface uh, to push your board up against. It's also smart to have a sacrificial board on the backside so you have uh, more surface to push against that fence. What I'm gonna use is this jig that I made. This is a spline cutting jig for picture frames. So you make your picture frame and you put it into your jig and then you run it across the uh, table saw and it will carve a groove in it. But it's at a 90 degree angle, so I can also use it for this. This is just some plywood, and I uh, nailed it together so it's a U, and it fits right over the top of my table saw fence. So I can just push it like this, makes this job way safer. So we're gonna take our piece, we're gonna put it onto our jig and push it right across the table saw so that it cuts as close into the center as possible. And to ensure that it's centered, after we cut it, we'll take the piece, we'll flip it over, put it back in here and cut it again. Then we know our groove is dead center. We cut our groove in board number one, so now it's time to do the layout for board number two. So we're gonna put these together, and I'm gonna make a mark on board number two where the inside faces of our groove is. So put a mark and a mark, and then I am going to take a square and extend those lines down. And then we'll take a combination square and we're gonna make our 45 degree mark. So we're gonna do it from the outside corners across. So I'll put my pencil on the outside corner, move my square up and make a mark. And the same thing on board number two. And make a mark. But board number two, you should have something like this. You have your two marks that represent the inside faces of the notch and then the 45 degree mark. And we're gonna set the blade so that it's right in this little corner where the 45 degree intersects with the line. I lowered the blade so that it just touches the corner where our lines intersect. So. The next step is we are going to remove the waste on the outside. And after we're done with that, we'll move to the inside. As I said, we got a couple areas to cut out, the outside and the inside. So starting with the outside, what we're gonna do is I put a miter gauge in with a sacrificial fence and I move the table saw fence over as a guide. We'll put our board against the miter gauge and we'll nibble away from the outside inward until we get to about where this line is. Then we can take our board number one, put it up against board number two and see if it's flush. And once we get it flushed up, we know that this is good. Then we'll turn our attention to the inside cut. 
And that one actually is a little bit easier. We cut the outside, now we're gonna cut the inside. And to do that, it's really simple. We are going to move the table saw fence until it is the same distance as the thickness of the board. So when this blade feels flush with our board, we're all set. We'll do the same thing against the miter fence, against the table saw fence, push through. And then as we cut, we'll work our way towards our next line. And we will randomly check it by test fitting with board number one. I tilted my blade to 45 degrees, so now we can cut our miters. And I took the workpiece and I elevated it by putting it on a piece of MDF. And the reason being is that we're gonna cut the miter on this end and then flip the board over and cut the miter on the other end. And I'm gonna use a stop lock to do that. But it's very easy for this tiny mitered end to accidentally slip and fall underneath our stop block. So by raising it up, the mitered edge has something to butt against. Now we're gonna set our blade height. And I move the piece over and I make sure that the table saw blade is just touching our edge. And we are going to cut the miter and work our way back until we're right into this nook right here. This is the sweet spot. The miters on our number two boards look great, so we can turn our attention to the miters for the number one boards. And same thing applies. We're gonna use the miter gauge and a stop block. We're gonna butt it up against it, cut the miters, and we're gonna cut them until this outside edge feels sharp. And whenever that miter hits the outside edge, we know we're good and we can move on to the next step. With our miters cut, we can put our joint together to see how it looks. And what you'll notice is that there is a slight gap there and that is perfectly okay. The last cut that we'll make is to trim the end of this board until our miters fit perfectly together. The next joint that we're gonna make is the rabbited miter joint. So it's sort of like the locked rabbit miter joint, except it doesn't have the piece that interconnects. So it's a lot simpler to make. So just like last time, I have my boards already cut and I'm gonna lay them out and mark them one, one, two, two. The first step is we need to mark out the rabbit that we're gonna cut. We're gonna cut a rabbit on the end of each one of our boards. And two of our boards are gonna have kind of a small rabbit. And the other two boards are gonna have a longer rabbit. So to do that, we're going to find the center of our board and make a mark. And we will turn our combination square to the side and make a mark for the depth. That way we have an even square. Now I have some of these brass setup blocks and they are super convenient. They're really not that expensive. So I'll put a link in the description if you wanna pick some up, but I can mark it turn the board up and mark it again. And then I know I have a perfect square and I need to cut out the waist right here. With our rabbit marked, I can then set the height of my blade and I want the blade to just touch the center line that I marked out. And I am using a ripping blade because it has a flat bottom tooth and it's gonna give us a really clean cut.
I cut the rabbit in all of the number one boards, as you can see, and now it's time to cut it in the second board. So it's gonna be the same depth, but we want the rabbit to go further into the board. And to do that, I've left the blade at the same height. We don't wanna to touch that. Instead, we'll take our board and we're gonna move the table saw fence so it is the thickness of our workpiece. So move it over until the blade is flush with our material, then we're good to go and we can cut our rabbits. We have the rabbits cut. So now it is time to cut the miter. So I set the blade at 45 degrees. This is the one board and I am setting the height of the blade so that the tooth just touches the edge right here. So then we will cut our miter down until it gets right into this nook area. We have the miters cut on board number one, so now it's time to cut them on board number two. Same thing applies. We're gonna put the miter fence in and push the boards through, and we're gonna trim away at this edge until board number one fits snugly into place. The next joint that we're gonna make is a hidden spline miter joint. So you've probably seen miters before, and you've probably even seen miters that had splines in them from the outside. And the reason why people do that is because it provides a lot more strength to the joint, but also a decorative element. But maybe you don't want to see those splines on the outside, but you still need some added strength because a miter by itself just isn't really strong. So that's where the hidden spline miter joint comes into play. So what I've done is I've set my blade to 45 degrees and I already have my work pieces cut and ready to go. So I'm gonna use a miter gauge and I'm going to simply cut miters on the ends of all of our pieces and then we'll move on to the next step. With our miters cut, now we can do the layout marks for our splines. So I'm gonna put the joint together and I'm gonna grab a piece of painter's tape just to make it easier for us to make our marks. And the spline is gonna be embedded into the joint. So we have to cut out a notch here using the table saw. So I set the combination square to half the thickness of my material. And I am going to put it up against the joint and make a mark. Then I am going to turn my square to a 45 degree angle and where that mark is, I am going to put a mark all the way across. This is just rough guide, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it gives me a line of where I can line up my saw to, to make my cut. I swapped out the blade with a ripping blade. The flat bottom tooth of the blade is gonna give us a nice clean look whenever we cut our notches out to hold our splines. And we're gonna do the same thing we did before. We're gonna use the miter gauge, the blade's tilted at 45 degrees, but I'm gonna lower the blade down slightly because I don't wanna cut all the way through the workpiece. Then we're gonna push it through the blade and we're gonna cut out notches on the ends of all four of our boards. We cut the notches out of all of our miters, so now it's time to cut the splines to fit inside of them. Well, I know that my table saw blade is an eighth of an inch wide, so that means that my spline has to be an eighth inch thick to fit inside the notch. Well, what I can't do is I can't simply move the table saw fence over and cut a one eighth inch strip off of a board, because if I do that, the grain direction is gonna be up and down, and that's gonna make for a really weak spline. 
So you can see that if we put the joint together, it's not likely that our board is going to break in half. It's much more likely that when the joint's together, it's gonna to break out or in. That means that the grain direction of our spline is up and down, it's easy to snap. Well, to turn it so the grain direction is sideways, what we'll do is we will take our board and we will trim off our splines off the end. So we'll make the slices and get all of our splines from there. And then we're gonna have a much stronger spline and then a much stronger joint. Hey, that was fun. It's good to get in the shop and try new things. And if you like to look at miters, but want to up your woodworking game, then give one of these joints a try. They give you the clean look of miters, but a much stronger alternative. And if you have an idea for a woodworking joint that you'd like to see, then let me know in the comment section below. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date on the latest happenings in my shop. And you can also find me on Instagram at Genealogist Woodworker. Until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.